Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we need to talk about a big update surrounding of course the first overall pick of the Montreal Canadiens in Uri Slavkowski and his start to his first NHL season. Now we've seen three games up to this point with the Montreal Canadiens and Slavkowski in the lineup and it's been a confusing mess in all honesty. But what has gone on with Slavkowski in his first few games? What can we take away with it? How has he played? And what happens next with his time in in Montreal. Watch till the end for all of the details and all the analysis. Make sure that subscribe button if you are new. 45% of you guys aren't subscribed, so if you like cocky and prospect talk, this channel is the place to be. The Uri Slavkovsky situation is getting weirder and weirder by the day. If you watched the video I made about a week and a half ago detailing his time in the preseason, how he played, how Kent Hughes had his comments on him being a little bit underwhelming, you would know that my plan and at least my thoughts on Slavkovsky were that he should have started the year in the AHL, truly getting accustomed to the North American game there in a much more sheltered role while getting the confidence and getting amazing production and then likely being in the NHL maybe in the last couple of weeks of the season and especially making that full-time role and bouncing into it in 2024. That's what I wanted to see. After that video though, Slavkovsky did play a lot better in the preseason games we saw and steadily improved in his overall game too and eventually the Montreal Canadiens would end up calling him up to the NHL and having him officially make the Habs roster. Which in all honesty was a pretty big surprise to me. Even though of course Slavkovsky did play well, especially in those last couple of preseason games, I still thought the Habs would likely end up sending him down to Laval and not really repeating the same mistakes that they have made in the past. But they put up Slavkovsky onto the main roster and had him as one of the more interesting younger pieces on this team. And of course, with Marty St. Louis being one of the most interesting coaches in the league, mostly focusing on the development of the younger guys like Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki and how he's seen their games grow, I thought even though Slavkovsky should start in the AHL, that Marty St. Louis would be able to handle him correctly. But that has just not been the case so far through three games, Slavkovsky's time with the Habs has been relatively quiet. You see, in his first three games, zero points, a minus one, and in terms of just the raw, simple statistics, hasn't really done all too much, but considering the situation he's in, I don't really blame Slavkovsky all too much. And this is where we get into, in my opinion, the mishandling of Slavkovsky so far in his time with the Montreal Canadiens. If you look on Hockey Reference, you can see he's only getting, in the three games he's played so far, an average of 10 minutes and 57 seconds of time on ice. And because Slavkovsky isn't on the power play, all of those minutes are even strength. And on the third line with Christian Dvorak and, and, and the bottom six all around him. So to me with Slavkovsky, even though the production hasn't been there, to me the production isn't the problem. It's the way he's playing, how he's playing, and the situation he's given. And to me, everything we've seen so far has been disappointing on both fronts with Slavkovsky and and the management. And you see as well, 43% offensive zone face-offs. I mean, he's been solid defensively so far, in my opinion, but if you're really trying to give this guy a great opportunity, giving him less than 50% on offensive zone face-offs isn't exactly the best way to do it. And especially that ice time, all of it being even strength, you're not putting him in a position to succeed. And we look at the game logs, you can see in his first game versus Toronto, he played 10 minutes and 34 seconds. Then in the game versus Detroit, he only played 9 minutes and 37 seconds. Now, some of that, of course, with him only being an even strength player and the Habs going on the power play and penalty kill quite a bit, that definitely affected things. But he was a minus 2 in that game and only played 9 minutes. And then you see in the game versus Washington, that was a lot better. But I also feel like that was just a given that they were going to play the bottom 6 more because it was a back-to-back. -back. And you can see he was a plus 1 in that game, getting 12 minutes and 41 seconds. But still, even though he played more minutes, it's also not about the minutes at exactly. It's about the minutes that he actually plays. And considering that he isn't given any power play opportunity, how are you expecting to score, get confidence, and truly succeed at this level? It just won't happen. Now, it was interesting because I remember one player that it could kind of be a comparable to in Alexi Lafreniere. I remember back when he first started, he was an interesting player where the opportunity, it felt like, wasn't exactly there. But I went back and looked at his 2021 season the first few games he played obviously you can see the first six games he went completely scoreless but even the time on ice for him was way more generous than the Montreal Canadiens and the Rangers actually had a offensive roster that had amazing lethal options on almost every single line of the top nine so they 
had an excuse not to play Lafreniere, but they still did. You got 13 minutes in your first game, 16 minutes in your second, then 14 minutes, 15 minutes, 18 minutes, 14 minutes. That was at least way better than what we've seen with Slavkowski, and I feel like it's just an interesting comparable because I remember Lafreniere, it felt like, didn't get the opportunity that he really deserved, but in terms of ice time, he's laughing compared to so Uri Slavkowski, no pun intended. With Slavkowski, although it's just been three games, you can see the difference. I mean, Lafreniere in his first six games didn't play less than 13 minutes, but with Slavkowski, as high as 12 minutes and 41 seconds, and it was pretty much an automatic given that was going to be the case, and with no power play time, it's just really disappointing to me. And of course, you see the situation with the lines. You have the first line of Caulfield, Suzuki, and Anderson, which I don't see being touched anytime soon, but then you got the second line of Doc Monaghan and Evgeny Dadanov, and of course, you got Slavkowski on that third line left wing, centered by Christian Dvorak and Brendan Gallagher. And as much as Gallagher has looked solid this season, I just don't think that this line is a fit whatsoever for Slavkowski. In some ways, Gallagher kind of fits the role that Slavkowski is hoping to have, but with Christian Dvorak, it just feels like there is no chemistry with that line whatsoever. And again, considering that this is the only minutes he's going to play, he's only going to play with these guys because he only plays even strength, that is a massive problem for a player needing confidence at this level. And to me, this situation might be okay if Slavkowski was given power play time, but that's the main problem. You look at the power play units, you got the first power play unit of Anderson, Suzuki, Monaghan, and Caulfield as the forwards on the first power play unit. And considering everything, it makes sense why Slavkowski wasn't, wouldn't be there. That's fine. That's okay. Even though I think Slavkowski would definitely benefit from it, I can see why they wouldn't have it. But they don't even have him on the second power play unit. Look at this. They got Gallagher, Doc, Dvorak, Hoffman. You have Mike Hoffman, who hasn't done anything in the games he's played over Slavkowski on the power play. It makes zero sense to me. Even though Hoffman, I guess, kind of needs to have the power play to kind of thrive, even in the power plays we have seen, even with those seconds that we have seen with Hoffman on the power play, he's looked abysmal. He's looked absolutely awful. And you can't you can't give Slavkowski a spot like that. You can't even give him like 30 seconds of power play time. Even though it wouldn't make a huge difference, it still would mean a lot more confidence to him and would actually give him some space to work with here. And even though that second power play on it isn't amazing by any means, it's at least an improvement and gives him some useful offensive time. And especially considering, again, the defensive zone percentage and, and him being put in the defensive zone for face sauce 57% of the time, to not give him power play time to compensate, it, it's just horrible to me. And especially considering that Marty St. Louis, one of the biggest things he's championed is the fact that he wants to develop these younger players. Where's the development? I don't see it. And it really gets me peeved, man, because, again, my original game plan for Slavkovsky was to have him in the AHL starting there and really get used to the teammates down there because I think that is something that is important. And even though giving him the, the, the cup of tea in the NHL is good, in my opinion, I still would have handled it differently. I still would have had him starting at the AHL level, starting with Faval, really getting confidence there, and then in the end of the season, giving him some NHL games and giving him a lot more breathing room when the Habs are in a position where there's not nearly as much pressure on him. And to me, I think we're already seeing just the kind of failings of the Habs management. I mean, what is going on? What is the plan here? I get having Slavkowski in the NHL and giving him maybe that nine game tryout or whatever you want to do, even though he doesn't really need to be a nine game tryout, giving him those first couple weeks to see what really happens with him. But if you're not going to give him any chance to succeed, what is the plan here? It doesn't make sense to have Slavkowski playing nine minutes a night, not getting power play time, centered by Christian Dvorak of all people, and not having him in the AHL where that confidence is truly going to thrive. I mean, what, what what is Slavkowski supposed to do? What is he supposed to do in this situation? I know for me, I, I mean, people will be disappointed by the zero points. He's had chances. He's looked okay in the games he's played. And to me, I think that is an absolute miracle considering the player he is. If you're going to give an 18-year-old forward no power play time straight out 
allow the draft, you're setting himself up, you're setting him up for failure. It, it, it's just as simple as that. And considering as well the teammates he has to play with, the line that just has no chemistry, to me, if they continue this any longer, it'll just continue to be an absolute dumpster fire. And I just hate to see that with Slav. And you also consider the fact that Laval has already started their season, already playing a couple of games, and players are already starting to gel down there. And to me, Slavkovsky, even if he does go get sent down maybe in two weeks' time, he's going to come into a lineup that's already pretty set. And even though I think he will do well there still, I think starting in Laval was especially needed. And again, considering the pressure, I don't think there would have been much down there. Obviously, Slavkovsky, it would be bad news for him to go down in the AHL. He doesn't want that to happen. But at the same time, we already saw Owen Power skip a year last year. And to me, I think you now have a president where first round pick, uh, first overall picks shouldn't automatically make the NHL in year one. And I think for Slavkovsky, even though it would have sucked for him, I think if you put him in the right situation, he could have understood it and gotten amazing confidence down there to dominate in the last couple weeks of the NHL season when he gets called up and hopefully have a great official rookie year in 2024. Now, I think the year will still go fine for him, but again, I feel like they need to rip the bandit off this situation because it is just not working. And to continue on to the thought that I think Slavkovsky still played pretty decent in the games he has played, if you look at the expected goals for per 60, he's fourth right now on the entire Habs roster with a 2.33 expected goals for per 60. And you look at the expected goals against per 60, which the lower number, the better. With Slavkovsky, if you look at the best in the in the Habs, Kirby Doc is the, so, so, uh, so far the best defensive player statistically for the Habs. But then you got Slavkovsky fifth on the team. So even though his situation has been horrible, he's been given no power play opportunity, he's still played decent at the games he's played, which I think is completely admirable and is honestly a little bit respectful too. I mean, considering the situation he is in, to be able to still be putting up solid results and getting the chance he, chances he is getting is pretty miraculous. And even though I think, I think he should still be in the AHL, to me, if you're going to have him in the NHL, have him in a better role, have him at least on a power play unit, and give the guy a chance to have some confidence. Otherwise, I just don't see how this is working out at all for Montreal. And to me, especially considering Marty St. Louis' brand of being a great coach for the younger players, I just haven't really seen it work out too much in Slavkovsky's favor so far, and I'm really hoping that changes. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Comment down below. What do you guys think about Slavkovsky's situation in Montreal right now? How do you think he's played with the Habs so far? Has he played bad? Has he played good? And what changes would you make? Should he go to the AHL? Should he get more of an opportunity? Let us know in the comments down below. Of course, share the video with your friends, get it to all the Habs and hockey fans you guys know online, and click this card for all of my prospect talk right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.